a Costa to Rica to. model? Yeah. A Sri Lanka model? Yeah, dude, the Sri Lanka model. So, okay, we got to do the Sri Lanka model. Uh, how this on one earth up. do you say that it's freaking Sri Lanka? Anyway. Yeah, show me the knee fights riding into battle on pandas. Look, <laughs> I, I'm not... <laughs> And the Asians are the descendants of the Jews. It's just so... I'm sorry. I can't do it. No, no, no. That's their narrow yeah. neck of land going through into the land northward. Wait, so are you saying the studio right there in L.A. was in straight up Book of Mormon territory, dog? It, actually, more Jaredite territory. I think okay. the biggest strength of this one is that it ends up having Layman and Lemuel as Florida man. Look, the Book of Mormon has to be in a real country. Brother Jared spoke Akkadian. Malaysia? <laughs> no, when I first read the Book of Mormon, Atlantis. I imagined it, and I don't know why I imagined it this way, because it doesn't actually make sense. I imagined it happening in Washington State. <laughs> like, no, wait, really? And he even has a place that he references as, like, a possible temple site. The Panama model helps account for uh, the, the sinking cities in 3rd Nephi. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Carden Ellis, and today I'm joined in the studio by Kwaku L and Brad Whitbeck. And Brad has brought us a very interesting uh, website, uh, a very interesting conglomeration of theories that we're going to explore today. That was a great word, conglomeration. Mm -hmm. We're checking out the top Book of Mormon land theories with maps. Yeah. And this, I'm really excited to actually see what you uh, bring us today, Brad. So take it away, man. Tell us what's going on. So this is, honestly, a lot of this is rooted in a really cool new website coming out called the Book of Mormon dot online i think book of mormon dot online is that so book of mormon online but it's one of those dot onlines because they couldn't get the dot com yeah exactly okay cool rock on let's check this out um it's actually a really cool website and um i was looking through it they have some really cool stuff about like the characters in the book of mormon they have some interesting things about like just the structure of the book of mormon some timelines with it and then i saw on their drop down menu on the side a thing with maps Oh, and okay. When I look at there, this, I'm gonna go there. Where is that? Oh, maps right there on the side. Oh, yeah. okay. And so it starts with this internal map here, right? All right. And so we, I think a lot of people have probably seen this one before, where you kind of have like this vaguely, like hourglass shaped looking thing. Oh, dude, you can zoom in and look. There's like there's Sodom, Ammonihah. Sodom. There, yeah. There, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops, Sodom. Yeah. Did I say Sodom? <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops, sorry. That was it's all you know, good. It was a Freudian slip because you're here, bro. Oh, no, just, oh okay. <laughs> what the heck was that? So <laughs> zoom out just a little bit. Um, and okay. this one is really, really interesting because um, when you look at this, what this internal map is, is it was a map that was developed basically showing the different places in the Book of Mormon relative to each other Yeah, as it shows up in the text. So this one isn't linked to any specific place, but it's a... And they kind of make it this generic hourglass just probably to neuter everybody's claim that it happened in Michigan, it happened in Baja, California. Well, no, no, no. It's more an attempt to just say, hey, this is kind of the land suggested by the Book of Mormon itself. Okay. We can kind of tell there's a land southward, a land northward, and these are where things tend to happen. Like you have the land of Zarahemla is tends to be north of the land of Nephi. Okay. The land of their first inheritance is south of the land of Nephi. And then the land of desolation is the land northward, right? Okay. You got a narrow neck of land, north I of the land. I forgot Bountiful. there were so many cities that are actually just mentioned. Yeah, there's in a the ton. Book of Mormon. I mean, look at this, bro. Holy smoke. Especially when you get into like the war chapters has a lot of things about like where certain lands are placed. And when you start looking at some of these, it makes more sense like strategically why they would have been worried about stuff. And like, oh, why does Ammonihah get attacked more often? Why does um, what what was going on with Amalekiah going for the land northward? Why was that even important? Okay, some of that shows up in this. But um, so that internal map is interesting. But it's not tied to anywhere, right? So what's cool is on this Book of Mormon online website, they have a little drop-down menu where you can click almost all of the maps, right? Okay, wait, I'm clicking. Where is it? So I'm here on the side where it says map. Now where do I go? top left corner of the map zone, you're going to see a thing that says internal. It's oh my gosh! But look, when you click on different sites, it says what it was. Like oh, this is so cool. Yeah, dude, it's so in depth. Okay, sweet. Now, so where's internal again? 
I click on internal there. Oh my gosh, you can click on oh the Near East. That's the first couple of um, chapters of the Book of Mormon. There's there's like the Mesoamerica model. Yeah. Oh, so zoom in on okay, this. Cool. This one's yeah, really interesting. Yeah. All right. Um and Quaku and I were chatting about this one. This kind of shows a um I think Sorensen's model as oh, the main one because okay, it's got yeah, Zarahemla yeah. over on like the Grijalva River. So wow. This one's really, really interesting. Oh my gosh! There's the plains of Heshlon, Valley of Gilgal, uh, Gim Gimno, Nehor, Josh, Ablom, Land of Lehi, and those are all stuff that's in Desolation, right? So if you zoom out, this is a fascinating thing that I want to make okay. sure people understand. Okay. Um, one of the parts of this theory is look. We're dealing with people in a Mesoamerican area where they don't necessarily have the same compass rows as us, right? So mm. you see something interesting with this. It's orientated. Orientated? Is that a word? Oriented. Oriented <laughs> in yeah. a way where the land desolation, normally the land northward, looks like it's kind of west, right? Well, it's like California at an angle. When you think you're traveling north on the five freeway, you're actually traveling northwest. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. And But what's interesting is the part of this theory relies on, hey, the land of Zarahemla, see where that is. Okay. Basically, they're pulling from, uh, zoom out a little bit, it has it okay. um, labeled bigger there. Yeah. So, um, and let's put it on the map real quick so that people can see it. Okay. Um. So if you want to have that oh, in the whoops. screen. Oh, whoops. Yeah, sorry. I didn't transfer it over. Okay, yeah. No, you're good. So you've got the land desolation a little bit more north, but the land of Zarahemla is basically their reference point yeah. for the vast majority of this. And what's fascinating is in Mesoamerican cultures, especially in the past, they don't have the exact same compass rows where they're thinking north is straight north and then East, West, South. Oh, they didn't South. use the Mercator projection. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. they, they were using way different maps than yeah. us, right? <laughs> exactly. So they, they're they doing more of a thing where East is where the sun rises, West is where the sun sets. And so North is much wider. It's a more expansive, like, everything this way is North. Okay, cool. Where cool, everything cool. this way is South. And, and when you look at, like, in the Book of Mormon, it very rarely mentions East and West. It oh, almost always talks about like, or, or no, 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 I might be wrong on that. I, I'm probably. Well, it doesn't represent <clears throat> two of the four directions as much as it represents. I think the, you're right. It, it's almost it, always north or south. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a little bit of east, but notice on this map how little west there is, right? You've got the land of Zarahemla and then like the sea is basically right yeah, there, right? Exactly, so yeah. they're not going to be referencing things to the west very often. Um, and what's really cool about this one is, uh, so the narrow neck of land, right next to Land Bountiful, there doesn't seem to be like a super narrow neck of land here. Yeah. But if you can see the like patterns of the uh, elevation there, yeah, you actually do have a narrow neck of land in that there is this place where the uh, water comes in. Scroll yeah. down just a little bit more okay. uh, on the other side. Yeah. That is is more of a yeah. narrow neck, right? Where as they're coming up along the mountains, interesting. That's their narrow yeah. neck of land going through into the land northward because that's the only pass that you can get through. Yeah. From oh, that zone, right? Interesting. And and when you go back down, yeah. This the the northern part of that, yeah, is actually it's got a river system that floods heavily uh, higher. Really? On, okay. Into the coast. Okay, yeah. It, that has a river system. Notice how there's no real like cities in there. That's yeah. a river system that floods a lot and occasionally like is just impassable terrain, right? Whoa. And so this is so cool, man. Yeah, it's got some really interesting stuff going for it. And, and there's even a geologist. Okay. Uh, Jerry Grover is his name. Okay. That has gone through and done like a geological survey of the Book of Mormon where he like looks at things that happen in the Book of Mormon from a geological perspective. Okay, yeah, yeah. And this map lines up really nicely with what kind of fault lines things would have to be on, what kind of volcanoes would need so to be So you're applying for an establishment job by adopting the Mesoamerican model right now. 100%. Yeah, you're 100%. gunning for the red chair, bro. That's what I'm doing in this yeah. moment. <laughs> so so which, what are some of these other models, Yeah, dude? so z like, zoom out just a little bit. Okay, I, I want okay. one more note about this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you have Land of Zarahemla there on the left, right? Yeah. That's a Sorensen model thing. The land of Zarahemla can be further to the right, okay. deeper into the Yucatan Peninsula, um, 
under a model from Norman and I think uh, also he has one where he puts it on the the Azuma Cinta River. Oh, so I there's see. some interesting variations. Yeah, I don't care. He has to say <laughs> oh my God. No, I <laughs> <laughs> but we've got um, some fascinating variation within some of these models, which is really interesting to see. Um, but yeah, let's move on to one of the next. So, so what other options we have here? I'm, I'm pulling this up. We've got Near East. We've got the Eternal. We've got the Heartland. Oh, snap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull up everything. Pull here. up the next big gun. Pull up. Uh, so we've got internal, internal. Go Heartland. Go Heartland. Oh, yeah. snap. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So this one's interesting. This one, I think, is more of a... Is this more the Wayne May one, Kwaku? Uh, because they... Yeah, this looks like a... I'm not... I, I'm... Because I think I've seen Wayne May use one more like this in his presentation. Rod Meldrum right? focuses a lot on Ohio, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So I think this might be Wayne May. I, but I'm not, I don't really? know. So, so zoom out a little bit more. The, okay. This Wayne May one has them landing. Their land of their first inheritance is yeah, down right that. near the Florida panhandle, right? And then the land of Nephi goes up into Tennessee, which he has some fascinating things that he talks about. Where like, hey, you have all this Egyptian influence there. Like, what's the capital of Tennessee? Yeah, Memphis. Right? And you have all of these fascinating little things around, like, words in Tennessee that actually tie into Egyptian really well. And he even has a place that he references as, like, a possible temple site in... Really? Uh, yeah, in ancient uh, uh, Tennessee. Well, I don't like know... Amongst the mound builders that nobody can correctly explain yet? Or yeah. What? So so this one kind of relies on, like, the Adena and Hopewell peoples being the Nephites and the Jaredites. And, and there is a shocking amount of strange Middle Eastern and... Egyptian connections to the natives in Florida. If you look into like old world Florida stuff, oh really? An, an insane amount, like a really strange amount of stuff. Bummer, his happening. map doesn't have anything on there, but maybe another one does. And, and dude, zoom out just a little bit more. I think okay. the biggest strength of this one is that it ends up having Layman and Lemuel as Florida man. Because they stay there in the land of their first inheritance, right? And I can't think of a better fit in the scriptures of people who would be in Florida than Laman and Lemuel. So, so basically, we have to come up with our own version, our own theory as to where the Book of Mormon took place. Oh, heck yeah. I've got my own theory now. Too. Oh, yeah? Oh, dude. What Can I guess? Well, when Tartaria. I, no, when I first read the Book of Mormon, Atlantis. I imagined it, and I don't know why I imagined it this way, because it doesn't actually make sense. I imagined it happening in Washington State. <laughs> like, really? Wait, really? This is the clear other side. <laughs> what? I imagine it happening in Washington State and then like in Oregon and playing out in Idaho. Oh, dang. That's I have fun. no clue why, but that's where my brain put it. Yeah. No, that's a cool one. I mean, that's where- It's probably not there. Darren right? Southam's film was filmed in there, right? I don't in know. that zone, I, I think they had some Oregon shots. I have oh, no clue. Okay, Darren, cool, cool. I have no. Clue. Oh, but we're going to watch that. Oh, actually, review. the Book of Mormon videos filmed in Oregon as well. Well, I Parts just like the beautiful, big, tall Washington trees. And They're it's so like the, cool. The blues and greens to make a cool movie. Yeah, at this point, the geography is so open. We should just choose where we want to go film as a vacation and say that that's our sincerely held <laughs> religious beliefs. Yeah. And it's it's there like, we babe, go. I subscribe to the Hawaii model. So we got to go to hey, Oahu. That's where we filmed <laughs> my stuff with Mosiah. It, the first round yeah. out there, right? Um, I want to so, go visit my friends in Argentina. So I subscribe to the Ushuaia, South American Patagonian model. I, you know what I'm I subscribe to the uh, Clearwater, Florida model. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing I do want to say about the this beaches Heartland are beautiful model. there. Those beautiful beaches in the country. Is in Clearwater. Not in a vest with a white button up shirt. You know what I'm Here, pull, oh, okay. pull back up the Heartland <laughs> right. model. I want to talk about one other thing that I think is fascinating. About okay. This one. Uh, this one, the Heartlander. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Uh, this one's kind of fascinating. You have. Uh, the Land of Desolation, which is near Quebec, which is another fantastic bullseye. Desolation, Quebec. That's wow. great. Um, Canada being desolate is just fun to me being a Canadian. Okay. Um, now, <laughs> let's move on to one of the next ones. Okay, okay. So, I'm going to go back here to the browser, and then we're going to check out all of the other options. Man, this website's pretty well done. It looks like it was done with some kind of uh, templated backdoor code by... Somebody that's kind of like very analytical. It's got almost like a spreadsheet feel, mm -hmm. you know. And so I bet you whoever made this, I don't know. It's a, who did make this, by the way. Who made this, bro? I, I don't actually know. You don't know? You yeah. haven't done any research yet? Uh, no, I, I I just found this, thought it looked really cool, and was like, dude, we need to do an okay, episode. Okay, hold on. This. We got to do one thing before that. I do want to answer that question in real time. I just clicked on about. 
Yeah. So I'm going to show everybody what I'm checking out here on the screen. It says about what is Book of Mormon dot online. Book of Mormon dot online is a study resource aims towards making the text of Book of Mormon as accessible as possible. It breaks the text into reader friendly segments, yada, yada, yada. Here it is. Who created Book of Mormon online? OK, it says Book of Mormon dot online is created and de developed by Casey Kern. With some development support from outsourcing partners. So Casey Kern, is that a firm? Oh, or is that no, that's a, a dude. I've heard that name before. Wait, hold I feel on, let's like click on it. Hold on. We're I feel like see. I've seen him see. on like a Rick Bennett episode or something. Let me see here. Hold on. Uh I mean, there oh, there's Casey Kern. Oh <laughs> dude he looks like a dude that would program a website man you know what, I'm what does that even like, mean <laughs> he totally looks like a dude that would program a website dude like wait what does it say okay so it's casey Kern. Kern, that's a cool last name i love Kern county that's north of la county so building tools and apps for personal productivity home automation humanities education see i said like dude, he's oh a so he's guy. a coder dude yeah and then nice. it says oh there it is mit alumni Boom, nice. shakalaka. I told you, some right brain dude that's got the spreadsheets in his noggin. You know what I'm and saying? And he's made a super cool website. Yeah, so mm. CaseyKern.com has got a whole website and everything. Okay, cool. Well, we'll just, we'll go back. We'll go back. But that was his uh, profile on GitHub. So Casey, Casey, you got to come on the program. bro. I'm going to send you an email, dog. I'm going to send you an email. Mm -hmm. I see your little email address right here. I'm going to send you an email. Casey Kern, you got to come on the website. Bring your MIT uh, bros with you. So anyway, okay. Now we go back to the maps, bro. Yeah. So this is the internal map right here. We're going to click so on. So now we get into some more interesting. Oh, yeah. No, let's go on to the Americas. This one's cool. Um, the Americas one covers, uh, if you just scroll down, Carton, to Here's Americas. Americas. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this one is like the full hemispheric model, right? Yeah, dude. Where you've got their land of their first inheritance all the way down, down in like Chile and everything, right? But then you yeah. go all the way up to, again, land of desolation in Canada. Um, land bountiful is like America itself. Dude, look, they're putting the straight up land of Tiancum all the way up. In Baffin Bay. On yeah, in Baffin Bay. Yeah, man, they are like, going whoa. all the way. Like <laughs> this one is and, everywhere. And Moron is literally just out in the. I don't know. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can get yeah, on board this with one this doesn't one. This one's too. Test. This was probably too big, right? This is uh, kind of represents what a lot of people may, might have thought early on in the church's history before they started realizing just how localized all of the language within the Book of Mormon is. Okay, Dude, right? so if my mom freaking lives in the land Helam, okay, mm -hmm. and I live in the land Moroni, I don't want to have to go from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, all the way to, like, if I'm going to go from Moroni to Ammonihah to visit my mom, I don't want to have to go from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, all the way to freaking, you know, the border of Peru or Venezuela. Yeah. You and know? so like, a fascinating thing about this one is, uh, do you remember George Potter, who we ran into out in Saudi Arabia? Oh, yeah. yeah he's a cool cat. So he has a variant of this oh, in yeah. which rather than being all throughout South America, all the way into North America, it's more in Peru. And uh, I couldn't find a map of this to put in for this episode, um, but it's a lot more in Peru and assumes, I think, the Amazon Basin being kind of flooded. Really? And, yeah, for like the Sea East. There's I think the Book of Mormon has to be in California. Guess what? There's a map for that. I believe, Shut up, really? Yeah, I Carton, believe go to the, the Baja, Baja California. Map. Yeah, I wait, there's a the Baja, Baja California. This, that's my Jesse Ventura oh, wait, oh, wait a <laughs> I believe in the Baja model of the Book of Mormon. That, that, <laughs> it's good, Jesse Ventura. It is mixed with like a guppy, you know, like with the jowls. You know. I was there when Nephi landed. <laughs> <laughs> he does it like, I was so there when Nephi I, landed. Now, I, I don't think George <laughs> Potter's is as hemispheric as this. I think it's more uh, Peru-centric. Okay, cool. Um, so move on to the Baja California. Baja. That's actually the one I think. I'm legit a Baja really? California. You like yeah. the Baja California yeah. one? Yeah. Really? Interesting. So wait, take wait, us wait, through wait, it. Wait, yeah, take us through the Baja what, California. What about it is convincing? Well, I think it's a lot more localized. Uh-huh. Um... I think we get away with this more than we get away with the massive, like the Rod Meldrum, where it's so spread out. Um, I'm completely against hemispheric. Completely. It, I think it's, 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 it's too big. far too epic. It's too big. Um, this, because when I read the Book of Mormon, obviously it's large and expansive, but if, 
if you were to ask a guy in 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 S- S- Spanish Fork, yeah, to kind of describe Utah, he would make it sound very expansive too. I think when you when you get down to half the Book of Mormon is tribal warfare, and we know how Native Americans generally lived okay. in these clumps together. Okay. This makes a lot more sense to me. And and what's fascinating about this Baja model is okay. they they originally made it based off of the climate being more similar to the Mediterranean climate, right? And the idea okay. that, okay, Nephi says he brought across seeds and that they planted them and that they grew. So that would require a relatively similar climate, right? Okay. So that's what they're thinking here. Well, but here's my question. It's Where's the, the narrow neck of land? I, I was, zoom in. It's on here. Well, I was looking at it. I'm like, Look okay. between Bountiful and so. No, I get it. So they say the narrow neck of land is there, but how is that narrow neck of land any different than, I don't know, right here or any different than, I don't know, right here. All of Baja California is a narrow neck of land, right? So you made a good argument previously when you said, okay, there's this river valley that floods and there's, it could be called the narrow neck because it's the area in between a mountain range instead of being an if. Smith's. It's more like the only passable area between and, a mountain range. And the interesting thing is in the Book of Mormon, it doesn't necessarily say from that the narrow neck of land was, uh, or sorry, the narrow pass okay. that they go through was from the sea east to the sea west. It says from the east to the sea west, right? Okay. Which means to the east could have been that mountain range, right? Something else impassable. So what? how do you... How do you this one, I don't know. Do you know anything about the narrow neck of land here, Quaco? Or do you just want a vacation in Mexico down in Ensenada? No, I'm, 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 I won't even go to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, why not? You got to come to Mexico go. with this, with um, Radio del Barrio. But, but this one also is a cool thing well, about it. The thing is the Mexican influence in the Baja, I think we it, it can help explain some anachronisms. Mm. And um, uh, I just think we get away with more in the Baja. Baja. <laughs> in the and, I lived in Mexico for 55 years, Brad. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> I killed 15 cartel members. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> now, one cool thing about the Baja California model is, is Jesse it, Ventura model is what we should call it. Yes. It it is still compatible with like the rest of the Mesoamerican theory, right? Okay, Where, cool. Um if you have Nephites and Lamanites going into land northward, spreading out across they're they're just going into the lands that a lot of people believe fit in the Mesoamerican model anyway, so it's it's very compatible. Um, let's move on to the next one. All right, let's do it. I'm looking here on the screen, and I'm gonna pull up. There's Near East, Internal, Mesoamerica, Heartland, America's New York model? Yeah. Wait, which one do you want to do? New That's York, also Panama? a cool one. This one's fascinating. Do New York. Okay, cool. Uh, so Quaker, take it away. Oh boy, geez, I'm taking it away. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, uh, why I th- okay. So if you read the Antiquities in New York, okay, a lot of early members of the church legitimately believe the Book of Mormon happened in New York, right? In so that place, yeah. Camorra with you know, and um, we do know now that we have ancient, massive Native American battles that happened in the New York region, the New York area. Yeah. Um, in addition, it it is interesting when people come from all parts of the world to want to come to North America, New York is a perfect shot for a lot of different areas. Yeah, okay. Ellis Island, it kind of makes sense if 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 you're going to do it in the ancient world, it makes sense that you would come to New York. Well, as and much as you would. it used to be common also that in ancient Israel, the word sea could mean fresh water or salt water, large bodies of water. And it looks like mm-hmm. here they're calling some of the Finger Lakes and some of and the Great Lakes. There's the even seas. some evidence that like the word sea could be used for rivers, large yeah. enough rivers in some ways. Yeah. Um, now, the only down uh, the only part of that that's difficult is snow. Exactly. And the Book of Mormon doesn't really give us snow. As a Canadian, this is the hardest thing for me because I'm like, yeah, hey, Moroni, uh, the painting of Moroni bearing the plates in the snow. It's like I, I'm not sure if that's how it happened. Uh, but when you get to the Baja, <laughs> you don't have snow. I, wow. you know, so, but the New York model, though, it is epic. It is beautiful. And okay, may, maybe it's like the film person in me. But do you when you imagine like these Book of Mormon locations, can you see like the scenes in your head? Yeah, man, it would yeah. be so cool. And here's another interesting thing. I mean, this was happening when 600 BC to around 400 AD. Yeah, and where and, would and climate wise, things were a little bit different. You find parrots a lot further north. 
than you do. Like you, you're finding stuff in Tennessee where there's parrots in there, right? You mean and like archaeological evidence? Archaeological evidence of wow. like parrots and crap. So, well, what I, about the snakes? That's the thing. Is remember that part of the Book of Mormon where it says that the area was plagued by snakes? Yeah. Like oh, okay, that to me that alludes more to a tropical environment than to any kind of like frost line environment. Like it's not like New York is worried about rattlesnakes because there, you know there's the the autumnal and the the wintertime freeze. But right? this is where some of the other um, heartland models work and Appalachia, uh-huh. right? Just that whole area. You that takes care of. You got the goats. You've got all the stuff that yeah. the Book of Mormon names, and, and then you have like uh, what is it, Eastern Diamondback? rattlesnakes yeah, down yeah. in that area yeah and so there's there's fascinating stuff that like depending on what you're looking at might influence which of these you find most compelling at the time right okay cool um but let's move on to the next oh the next one okay what's the next one bro so um let's pull up that map we've got okay so we did near east which is the beginning of the book of mormon which is kind of cool mm-hmm. they put everything right here right i built a replica of the golden plates and refused <laughs> to let the fbi have it i got <laughs> I fought off 15 Chinese men who tried to steal my golden plates replica. Oh, so that's th- funny. Okay. This Near East goes through uh-huh. and shows you basically uh, Lehi's travels, like what we were filming with the uh, Paul brothers out there in yeah, 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 in okay. Israel down into. Saudi so now Arabia we're going well. from New York to the Panama mall. Yeah, dude. Wow. So this Panama one, this is probably closer to the. Um, George Potter one I was talking about earlier. Uh, I have a really good friend who swears by this model. Yeah. Really? swears by Panama. With, with the narrow neck of land being there, there's a, I don't know if this is labeled on the map. I've seen one of these where uh, I think it's the, oh, I'm forgetting the name Where's of the river. The, there's the waters of Ripley Ancom. So the hill Camorra just south of the land of Des- desolation is that little peninsula Here, right pull, there. Here, pull this up on the screen. Uh, oh, whoops. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, there we are. So there's the hill Camorra down there. Okay, with the land of desolation and Antum. Then here's the city of desolation. There's T. Ancum. They would call this the narrow neck of land. Okay. And then the city of Bountiful and Hagoth. Amonaiha. Yeah. And and then I've seen people listing the Magdalena River as the river Sidon for um, like a place when you're looking at this area as the possible Book of Mormon. Another, Another fascinating thing for this is they have more of the gold and silver and uh, alloys that Nephi mentions they have in the beginning. Okay, cool. cool which, cool. fascinatingly, in the Book of Mormon, you have, they talk about metal at the very beginning, and then they stop talking about it once they head out of the land of Nephi. Oh, and, interesting point. Okay. And so you're that's an, another interesting strength here, is like, hey, this one ends up in zones where they have access to metal in some of this, and then when they go more northward into like the narrow neck of land zone, hey, Suddenly, we we don't have as much metal to work with. Okay. So, well, is this all of them, or uh, is there one more? There's a few more. Over? There's there are at least three a more. Costa we have to go Rica over. model. Yeah. A Sri Lanka. Model? Yeah, dude, the Sri Lanka model. So, okay, we got to do the Sri Lanka model. Pull How this on one up. Earth do you say that it's freaking Sri Lanka? <laughs> so like, what? This one I actually couldn't find very much evidence for online. Like I was looking up because I I saw the map here, but then when I was like googling it, I'm like, what is up with this Sri Lanka model? Is this I just couldn't really find much. I mm. so they Quaku, you know the bridge in that's built between Sri Lanka and this is the, India. Yeah, yeah. They're counting that as the narrow neck of land here. And it's A- like Adams Bridge. Yeah, Adams Bridge. They're counting that as the narrow neck of land. And that's I'm, cool, but it's really cool. But I have no idea. Like I, I wasn't able to find anything. Well, was the river? I mean, was the water slightly lower two thousand years ago or something? Like. If anything, I, I, I'm not sure. It so, would have been higher. This is this is the Hindu land bridge built by like the monkeys in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which, oh, okay. by the way, is a, is a, is a is a crossover. I am completely in favor of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I remember seeing something a while ago before ever finding this map that this one was a little bit based on how you know the Sinhalese and the Tamil tribes in Sri Lanka how they're like kind of at war with each other okay so there I think this is a little bit of like hey this is leftovers of Nephites and Lamanites right I oh. think that that's yeah, part of but this. like is but anybody calling Sri Lanka a choice land <laughs> <laughs> like how many maybe the Sri Lankans right but I I think this one I, I have no idea where it's coming from, really. And well, no, Joseph Smith did not translate a Sri Lankan text. And that's some obscure <laughs> occult book that five people are going to read. They're talking. This is well, it's got to be in America. And then how did 
how did Moroni get to also, the Americas, it, and why did he go to the Americas? Also, is a thing for me. Like, I, well, but well, I have a solution. It's not for that. the America. Sri Lanka is. Like, no, but Joseph found the gold plates in America, right? So, yeah. like, how did Moroni make it from Sri Lanka and India? Well, also, where did Lehi land? Like, Joseph um, Smith I think they have it ma- land... marked on the map. Yeah, but Joseph Smith said, in this, the American continent, right? So, I, I mean, um, Sri Lanka. Was that Joseph Smith? That uh, technically, be... he didn't. And yeah. technically, during in Joseph Smith history, I'm not sure if he... If, if any, if the angel even says America, huh? Mm. Yeah. So, so this one, uh, this one actually, the Malaysian model is more convincing oh, to me. Give me a than the, uh, what, what, the Malaysia, <laughs> Malaysia. Than, than at least Sri Lankan one. I really can't buy any of them that are not in the Americas. But I want to tell you the thought process behind okay. the Malaysian model. At least Malaysia is the freaking. Oh my gosh, there is a Malaysian model. There Check this is. one Look out, dude. Oh, Check man. this one out. Give me a break. <laughs> As I was showing Riley this, she's like. <laughs> This is making me believe less. <laughs> like, uh, Riley's like, I believe less now than well, I did is, before. This is the shields of countries. <laughs> so <laughs> this one, this one's fascinating though. So this guy is his thought process on why Malaysia is really fascinating. Okay, he says, okay, look at what the Jaredites are talking about when they show up in this zone. They're they're talking about all of these animals. That- is this some missionary that served in Malaysia and just fell in love with the country and the people so much that he just like, has to have the Book of Mormon happening oh, there? Oh, we should check that because I, I can't yeah. remember. So the guy who did this, he was a little older. I didn't see where he had served his mission. Maybe, maybe okay. that plays in. Yeah. But um, one of the things he talks about is the animals. The animals fit really well. And then you have a good north to south alignment on the narrow neck of land, the land northward, the land southward. So that's, I think, where he's coming from on this. And then there's a really fascinating thing where in the late 90s, um, you have a battle going on and there's a group of people in Malaysia who he kind of identifies as being more tied into the Nephites and Lamanites as like remnants of them. They're funny enough. They're called the Karen tribe. Like they're yeah, there's no way it's Malaysia. But, dude. but yeah, listen yeah. to this. But listen to this one. They have a last stand battle in which they are like, they're in this final fort where they're about to be attacked and they name their fort. Guess what they named it? Kaumura. Oh, and it no. was based on like legends of their people of like final battles. <laughs> so that one, I'm like, what the heck is going on there? Like, I, I this- look, I hate to be the guy. I hate to be the guy. <laughs> but um, first, we already get enough crap when they're like, you believe that Native <laughs> Americans are the sense of Jews? No, they're sense of Asians. The balls takes to say. And the Asians are the descendants of the Jews. It's just so. I'm sorry, I can't do it. No, no, no. This one, this one is not saying every Malaysian person is a Nephite, right? Like this one, the guy at least has like a specific tribe he thinks is the leftovers of it. And there's a random. I think this one has the. Um, it's like, this poor like, guy. Sorry, because I don't want to bring it up just to shoot it down. We you know? gotta keep we, this. Ha- Look, the Book of Mormon has to be in a real country. It's like Panama is <laughs> Panama is a freaking like uh, a segue. Panama is not a country. <laughs> Panama is a is is where you land f- on your flight as you're headed to the cool place. <laughs> Malaysia, <laughs> Malaysia. <laughs> Malaysia is that a country? So, uh, I think I think the Malaysia one. I I personally am not. I want to get this Malaysian guy on the show because he's probably screaming at his screen right now because he's probably done some legit research. And I give him credit because check this out, he's the one that has more geographical markers on it than any. Than the almost other any. Yeah, show me the damn Nephites riding into battle on pandas. Look, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm sorry. There aren't pandas in Malaysia. So, but I I think it'd be really cool because we're right now we're doing such a brief over overview of all of these that we're not getting into like you need the japanese model you could have the narrow neck of neck of land in between two of the islands quite easily and jaredites riding into battle on pandas <laughs> that would that needs who can mid journey honestly i think it's just i really hate that one twitter account ian miles chong who's a malaysian guy is and he i malaysian? know a lot about malaysia <laughs> but it's, i know him and i hate that guy so now i'm associating this with ian miles chong yeah now it is really hard for me to take any model seriously that isn't happening in the Americas. He believes in the Malaysian model. <laughs> <laughs> he clearly doesn't. He has a full website. He's
crypto guy. I'm going to tweet daily until he reaches out that created the Malaysian model. Of <laughs> I'm going to start attributing things to him he doesn't believe out of spite. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Now, let's go. I think... Are there any more? He's going to call all of his powerful friends in the establishment of Mormonism. Oh, these guys you. can't even get a press release about Tim Ballard written now, right? I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Are there are there any more on this one? Uh, yeah, there was the Costa Rican model we didn't get. Oh, yeah, the Costa Rican one. Oh. Costa Rican model. So this one's really close, Kwaku, to the um, okay. rest of the... Uh, do, 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 what is that thing called? Panama. The Mesoamerican model. Oh, okay. It's just between Panama and... Mesoamerica. So here, where's the land of first inheritance? Okay, so they're saying that the boom, they land right there. Okay, I'm going to go back to the Panamanian model and see if where they say the land of first inheritance was. Because I'm not seeing where they claim the land of first inheritance is in the Panamanian model. Uh, it's going to be south. Back up. Be south. Zoom out a little bit. Okay. It's going to be right around the land of Nephi, just below. Land is of always Nephi where just that below. is. Yeah. Yeah. No, they only have Nephi issues. Oh, they don't have it marked. They don't have it marked. Yeah. Oh. So I was like, that's why I give the Malaysian guy credit because you know he's at least like boom putting a spot on everything. But we go back to the Costa Rican model, and here they have the land of the inher or land of first inheritance marked mm -hmm. right there on the bottom of the peninsula. Yeah. Okay, cool. Keep yeah. going. So Keep this going. one's fascinating. Now, during my research into these Book of Mormon maps, I found a really fascinating website that had a take I hadn't seen anywhere else. Really? Okay, what yeah. is it? Now, yeah, pull up this. Wait, can I actually say one thing about the Pan Panama model, though? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That yeah, actually yeah. is compelling. Yeah. The Panama yeah. model helps account for uh, the, the sinking cities in 3rd Nephi. Because oh. a lot of the coast of Panama is just so it's it's just a crap ton of these little islands oh. that were clearly attached uh -huh. to the mainland and are no longer. Oh, interesting. But but it's 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 sunken in a weird way where it's it's like uh, usually it sinks in, and what's just connected to the mainland is okay. the remnant of the island. In Panama, you've got like. The part connecting the mainland to the island sinks, and then it's like I just the castaway island still remaining. Okay, and so I do think the third Nephi sinking stuff is okay. interesting Could and works there. with Panama well. Interesting, uh, there, there's stuff that fits into the Mesoamerican model as well. Oh, by the way, um, before we move on to the final one, maybe start pulling up the next one, and I'll just give a brief overview of the. <laughs> The fascinating like difference between like the Malaysian model is driven entirely by a dude who's like, hey, let's go purely off of like what's in the text, what's scientifically proven to be there from animals and stuff like that. There's actually an African model that on the entire other end of the spectrum is brought up by a guy who is like, this came to me in a dream. Really? OK, but we went over all of the models on Book of Mormon online. And, and there's not a map. That I was oh, able to find okay, okay, for okay. the. That's why I'm just bringing it up right now as a oh, okay, transition thing it. until we move in. I got it. Because uh, I haven't found an actual map for the African theory, but it seems to be a guy who's like, this came to me in a dream. And it's very similar to the um, Malaysian and Sri Lankan style models in that it's not in the Americas, but has something to do with like, hey, it happened in this completely separate location and then was brought into the Americas later. But I know next to nothing about that one. Do you know anything about that one, Kwaku? I no, but um, so so they're saying it took place in Africa, and then Moroni fled to America to bury it. Pretty much. That's that's kind of what they're saying. That's and, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I have no idea. But and in the interest of bringing up every possible model, that's okay. I feel like that's kind of the point of this episode. We're doing yeah, an totally. overview of all of the locations. You get away right? with more that way. You you don't have to explain all of the uh the how are they the ships and the, but and 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 I know hmm. that that guy talks about something about like Israelite DNA showing up in a certain spot in Africa. Um, but it's I got some cousins who'd agree with that. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Now let's pull up this other one because. This one. What's the other one? Uh, this one is on the Gathered in One website. Okay. Cool. And this one was really interesting to me because he brings up something that I have not seen really talked about super effectively in other places. And it's about um, how there's a lot of different maps 
Is it this guy right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, cool. so this one's an interesting one. Um, go ahead and click into one of these maps to expand it. Okay, like this one? Uh, no, no, no. That's just Book of Mormon geography quotes attached okay, to like Joseph one of these Smith. ones right here? Yeah, so look at this one. This one's a little bit like expanded out of the normal Mesoamerican model that we've seen, right? Okay, yeah. Where you've got the land of Zarahemla up further into Mexico um, and the land southward down here. And then you have the land bountiful just north of Zarahemla. Um, now, this one is an interesting thing because it's got the Lamanites kind of assimilating more into the Mayans. And okay. then the Nephites assimilating more up into like the Zapotec and Aztec zones. Yeah, it does say like Lamanite cultural core. Yeah. And then, you know, interesting. And, okay. and click on the next yeah. thing over because this is where we find something fascinating because all of that is land southward for this model. Okay, right? so here's the next one. Uh, go Go over one more. Go over one more. All right. This one? Yeah. So okay. this is a funky looking map, right? Yeah, yeah totally. totally. Um, so you've got like the land northward being up in North America and the land southward being down in this. This is effectively this guy's taking the uh, internal map that we've seen before and showing how this kind of looks. But go over one further. OK, yeah. And this is his theory on this, that you've got Mexico down there, right? Yeah. Where you've got Zarahemla in the middle of Mexico, and then the land bountiful just a little bit north of that. And then over on the left-hand side of Mexico, you have this narrow neck of land, is um, this, this narrow pass okay. right there between the mountains and the sea. And that's actually a really well-established trade route between uh, like the southwestern U.S. and Mexico that has been used for a really, really long time. Okay. And so you see that little uninhabitable zone that he has yeah, set the up? uninhabited zone. So that's the Chihuahuan Desert. And one of the things this guy brings up is, hey, look, these ancient peoples didn't make phenomenal maps, right? And especially in places that you couldn't cross, those would end up looking a lot smaller because they would have no idea how long that place was, how big that place was. They're going to be a lot better at places where they actually stay. Right. Places where they actually live. OK. But you have. Okay. Right. Um, so they would have thought the Nephites would have thought of this part, the Chihuahuan Desert area of Mexico as much thinner than it actually is on our modern maps. So the thing that I find most interesting about this um, this one actually fits well with the other Mesoamerican models as well and links into a heartland as hinterland hypothesis from Mark Allen Wright that I think is really cool. What's the hinterland? Heartland oh, is hell, hinterland. He, he was my professor. Oh, was he? Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, awesome. Yeah, Mark okay. Wright was a professor. Baby. So his thing is that it happened in Mesoamerica, but when you get into Alma 63 and you have all of these people traveling into the land northward, okay, what's happening is um, they're going up into the heartland area. Right. So where okay. the Heartlanders think the Book of Mormon took place and where you have some Joseph Smith quotes about like, hey, Nephites were here. Those Joseph Smith quotes never talk about what time period they're there. So this one kind of meshes well with that in that this land northward that's going into North America. That's all stuff that's post Alma 63. Right. Interesting. Where okay. everyone where people are starting to go northward and and there's really fascinating stuff. Like if you've ever gone to Chaco Canyon in like Arizona. Dude, love it. I did my anthropology class there. Oh really? Dude, oh, sick. I got pictures of me in Chaco Canyon. I love in fact, one of the field trips that I want to do uh it, for us is to go to the Puebloan and the Anasazi ruins throughout Chaco Canyon. There's a sun disc there, there's some archaeoastronomy stuff there that you're speaking my language when you're talking about the Indians in the American Southwest, baby. Awesome, dude. Cause Another really interesting thing is in that American Southwest zone, you have a lot of buildings made with cement, yeah. which is talked about in the Book of Mormon, with, yeah. like Adobe, right? And they clearly had a lot of trees shipped from Mesoamerica. And this, pull up this next thing over. Okay, right here. You know, I, I've talked about the Uto Aztecan language groups yeah, brought up okay. by Brian Stubbs. Yeah, okay. So this is a map of those Uto Aztecan language groups. Wow. Oh, and it follows literally that what would be considered the narrow neck of land all the way up into boom. Exactly. Hey, right where we are. Yeah, exactly. The topic. Yeah. Dude. Wait, so are you saying the studio right there in LA was in straight up Book of Mormon territory, Doug? It, actually more Jaredite territory. This this guy's ah. map actually has the um 
it's really fascinating because I was, he, I was feeling something in the ground. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, was, I was tasting something in the water. So you know? this one is an interesting one because he goes into um, the Tower of Babel having happened way further back in history than we generally think of it. Right. OK. Where some of the other models, they'll they'll put the Jaredites showing up um, in time periods that are like around 2000 years ago. Right. This dude's thing is, hey, what if they showed up in California where we have mammoths, where we have elephants? Yeah. And it, it actually follows a lot of like the Bering Strait land bridge coming across. It's just the same thing. But it's like, hey, what if they just came across in barges and then spread out across? Right. And they're up in this zone. So you're saying that Jaredites were in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so his thing about the Book of Ether is that the Book of Ether is not just a translation but like a translation of a translation of a translation right you have ether recording all of this way late in his people's day and then those plates are recorded and they're found by someone else who puts them into the book of mormon which joseph smith then translates out of right so like he's like there's tons of time periods that could have been covered by this and it just got condensed by the number of times people looked at it. So dude, this site gathered in one is is just prolific. Look, they've well, got and, and a map that, I mean, of yeah, because Lehite the, geography, they got a map of Jaredite geography, they got all of this. They have so much. So there's By the way, I also want to plug a choiceland.com for people who want to learn about the Baja model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that one's but, cool. But the book of Ether, I mean, the brother of Jared spoke Akkadian. Oh yeah? I mean, he was Babylonian, right? Oh, maybe yeah. That's I mean, Tower that's of Babel, one option. Right? Yeah, I, mean, it's, 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 I thought the Jaredites were black and Phoenician, according to the one book that. Oh no, Jared Bar, Jer, uh, Jonah Barnes was in that. Yeah, podcast. yeah, yeah. That's okay. his. But I mean, if it seems if they, they were in the Tower of Babel area, which means they spoke Akkadian, which means that the first tongue of the brother Jared would have been Akkadian. So hmm. yeah, it had to have been translated a couple different times. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, and 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 you know, I. Huh? It's not. It's not bad. Yeah, this one's okay, fascinating cool. because what what it does, it actually has Jaredites ending up in the Olmec zone too. That they had like that yeah, they had gone. Those through. are my boys, the Olmecs <laughs> and the Toltecs, baby. But but that they had gone across all of North America as well and down into about the Olmecs being the farthest south they get. And this one's a really fascinating setup. Go ahead and put this map on um, for people. This um, one right here? Yeah, because that's what we're talking about The Book about of right Mormon now. landing places. Okay, yeah. right here. Because then you have the Jaredites landing over there in the California zone and going out, spreading out into the land northward and the land southward a little bit because you have portions of it talking about when they start going into the land southward. Um, and this one's way more expansive in the amount of time that it covers. It's, it's really fascinating to me. Um, and, I mean, I don't know which of these I find most compelling yet. And this episode we're just doing a brief overview of yeah. all of these options we got to get these people on yeah exactly i want to get deep dives on all of these models yes. and see like what are the really compelling reasons so one it. was the weaver model i yeah, saw yeah this this one's weaver is okay the, and then we got to get uh get your boy uh who's the dmv worker again oh my gosh <laughs> you know he uh, can he can bring his who would be a good one for the Sorensen model because sorenson has gone now but who's who would be a good person for repping that one we could probably cover that one really well too he's not coming on this show I, i'm footage sorry of, i ever brought up your name i have <laughs> footage of stuffing puppies into silos <laughs> what the heck? so um moving on uh wayne may would be a good one for the heartland and then rod meldrum has a different one is that who's yes who's a good heartland i have a couple one? questions or, or is it wayne jonathan may first Neville? Oh, but yeah? I would love to have yeah, but I got a couple questions for Wayne May first. Uh, I yeah, uh, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, I'll, yeah, I would love to get the guy who was behind the Malaysian model too to hear more of why he thinks that. Like, what what compelled him to put that together? You know, yeah, because because like you've got to believe it some to some degree to put together the theory and present it to people. So I, I want to hear his reasoning before I like dismiss it without understanding where he's coming from. Even though, to me. It's really hard to consider anything outside of the Americas. Also, I can't say, like, I guess Malaysia is, is like, a small enough area where if you make fun of it, it's kind of offensive. You know what I mean? So I can't <laughs> continue to make jokes about Malaysia. Um, where do you guys think the Book of Jaranek happened? <laughs> well, that one is clear that it's in England, right? Doesn't is that, Isn't that what that one says? Because Jaranek, the son of Aranek, 
who's got a son named Sharonek. I'm not kidding. Are like you that. serious? <laughs> Have we done a review of the book of Jaronek on this? No, we should, though. I think we mentioned it when I... Wasn't Don Bradley here? When There's we a guy mentioned? named Matty Gill in England who says he's a prophet, and he translated a book called The Book of Jaronek, which is like the Book of Mormon's cousin. <laughs> I'm not I'm not kidding. This is all real. It's like restoredbranch.com or something like that. Oh, interesting. And they have like this art Very that's kid. like not that great, but it, it's, the whole, it's this whole thing. Um, it's been doing it for like a decade now. Dang. Okay, we'll have to do it. And now, all right, well, let's it, wrap this up yeah, maybe with Yeah, final thoughts, dog, final thoughts. Important caveat at the end. The church doesn't, have like any of these models endorsed right none of these are officially endorsed by the church it's up to us to figure out what we think and really at the end of the day it's not important where the geography happened i actually think that god doesn't want us to know exactly where it happened because this is a good way to make us walk by faith and not by sight right that's fair. so i i think that it's a way for us because I don't think he wants people joining because we found horse bones in Mesoamerica. Well, I'll be right? honest. Whatever he believes, I just believe the opposite model. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> You're a good dude. The things he said about us disqualify him. What has he said academic. about us? I, I don't I, even know what he said I about us. Hey, audience watching this, I want you to go to the Stick of Joseph YouTube channel and comment on the video. Why were you arrested for beating kittens? Oh no, my god! I, I everybody, I want to spread this fake rumor about him. <laughs> Guys, I have never had anything but positive interactions with, and I've I've only run into him like a couple of times, but it's it's always paid a large role in the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. <laughs> oh my god! He was. Have you ever seen Osama bin Laden in the same room at the same time? <laughs> so this is not only an overview of the geography of the Book of Mormon, but also the roast of <laughs> for some <laughs> reason. For some oh, reason. I heard through the grapevine that he doesn't like me, and that's all the information I need to, to <laughs> accuse him of ridiculous crimes that he did not commit. Some third-hand account of, this guy didn't say something nice about you. Oh, I'm going to roast him forever now. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, Book of Mormon geography, totally fun. Not important for your testimony, but really interesting to look into. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, which one's your favorite before we go? Oh, man, it's hard for me to say. I think I really am liking what I'm seeing with this Weaver model one. I okay. haven't looked into it enough to like know everything about what it says yet, because there's a ton on his website. And a lot of it's in like an outline format. Okay. Like it was like put together and it's like replace this with something or add in the sources on this, you know, like there's stuff like that on the website. So um, I'm going to be reading into it more to see if it's better. But I, I definitely am more interested in the Mesoamerican models. Those ones seem to fit more to my understanding of the way that the climate seems to work and the way that like the battles all seem to be happening in a what fits with the dry season of Mesoamerica than what I would think is going on necessarily with maybe some of the more like Heartlander models. Or, and it fits better, I think, than anything outside of the Americas. But what about you guys? What what do you find most compelling? I like uh, I, I like the Weaver model, like you just said. It seems kind of fun, and it seems like they've covered a lot. For convenience, I would prefer the Heartlander model, just because then I wouldn't need a passport to go visit any of these locations. <laughs> it's just like right, you know, right in the backyard. Yeah. But I'm also afraid that like the Heartlanders would like kick me out of the club if they found out I was libertarian or something, you know, What? it seems kind of like a little bit of like, you know, like Ronald Reagan was their Messiah, not necessarily Jesus. What? You know, but <laughs> you're like, there's one hey, I, 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 I go ahead. believe the Book of Mormon took place wherever there's a lot more girls like this from the Testaments. Oh, Linnea. Dude, she was hot. <laughs> the, the Testaments? I don't remember that one. That movie? Dude, I Every know Every Mormon boy had a crush on, on Linnea from the Testaments. Dude, dude, so I know her, actually. She oh. was. Uh, she plays the wife of Alma the Elder in my next round of Mosiah videos that are coming out. Ah, and okay. cool. She's really cool. She's All a really I know awesome is person. I was watching that a, a, a long time ago. Like, dang, she's a baddie. <laughs> <laughs> every Mormon guy thought she was hot. Uh, every single and one. And every missionary who's watching that okay. in their language the Chilean translation. Chilean sister missionary in the ensign of, it would have been 2001 or 2000. Oh no, I served my mission from 2002 to 2004. So somewhere in like the 2003 or 2004 um, conference ensign, there was this 
gorgeous Chilean sister missionary that they took a picture of and was behind one of the conference talk thingies. And I knew like seven elders that like cut it out and like laminated it and made it a bookmark. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That's, that's, that's kind of weird, weird, dude. That's weird. <laughs> no. It was funny. It was funny. <laughs> They're like, you know, because it's the joke. Like it's the, oh man, you guys got to have a sense of humor. Uh, no, no, so, no. I, I, see where, <laughs> I see where you're coming from. But I, I think all of these models are super fun. Oh, one other random thought about the uh, Heartlander ones. Yeah. You know the one that's like bigger? They, that one relies a lot on travel being on rivers, which is really interesting. Oh, um, cool. Because like some of the Mesoamerican models make sense based on like distances mentioned in the Book of Mormon if they're traveling on foot. And you see the much larger thing up in uh, the Heartland zone work when you consider river travel. Um, so that's a really fascinating thing and, and i i'm looking forward to when we do these deep dives it's gonna be a lot of fun okay cool awesome sick oh well, well i want to hear in the comments which one people like the most yes that'll be true. super fascinating that's I, true. I wonder what our audience like thinks is the best option see if we have any malaysian model stands in here right yeah <laughs> and let's like do it. which one is most compelling to you guys and why That'd be super cool to yeah. see. Awesome. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments below. Which one do you like the most? And as always, for this and more, please make sure you check us out at wardradio.com. Right now, tell me who you are. Get in the car. Right now. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Before you go, please make sure that you like the video, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please let this be the video in which we earn your subscription and that you press the alert button so you're alerted to all of our fun live streams and standalone videos and community posts. Also, if you'd like to help us out, please consider joining the channel. Members get all kinds of cool perks and benefits. They get early access to a lot of our videos and special emoticons and emojis during our live streams streams and preferential treatment there it's a lot of fun speaking of a lot of fun we have a super cool discord if you'd like to join our discord check us out on wardradio.com there's a link to the discord there also you can sign up there for our newsletter our newsletter is a lot of fun and you can put your email address in there and if you'd like to contribute to the program please consider looking us up on venmo or on the cash app we're on both of those platforms also if you just want to keep watching more content right about here and probably right about here are going to be some more videos. Please check those out. And as always, for this and more, please make sure that you look us up and check us out at wardradio.com. This is what it's like to be one of the best. Moving to the beat, feel the song in my chest. Yeah, you know we turning up, never settling for less. Like, woo, gotta go big to make a statement. Stomp your feet through a machine.